question from FVD Engineering, which is Fault Engineering, on the dual bid option for the project. Um, Troy, on there. Yes. Troy, I'm I'm here, Steve. Can you I'm hear me? I'm here, Steve. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, good to have you here. Um, Troy, I really just uh, handed um, our um, our facilities committee the uh, memorandum. And uh, that's kind of the guide that we're, we're going to use here. So if you want to, are, is it just going to be you? Um, I believe Susan's going to join as well. Okay. Well, um, do you want us, or can you get started with that? And she can when she gets here? Yeah, I, th I think that's fine, Steve. Yeah. Maybe just do an overview of, uh, of the purpose of, you know, what, um, as it relates to that memorandum, I guess. Sure. So, um, as you guys probably are well aware, we've been working with you guys on this project since about 2016. Um, so the first part of this memorandum kind of goes through the background information of uh, how we got to where we are with uh, completing a, a, cell, a circular cell coffer dam design. Um, and that was that was originally back in the uh, during 2017 when we did our, our initial budgeting and phasing for the project that was the design that was chosen to move forward um and then fast forwarding ahead with all the uh the uh army corps of engineers and and not obtaining the funding that they were looking for to uh complete the dredging um so that, that part of the project sort of backed out, at least for now. And I know the Army Corps is still looking for funding. We took a closer look, um, being as though we, you know, about four or five years had gone by since we last looked at the design. And we wanted to take a look at additional designs uh, based on uh, contractor availability and increase in contractor pricing and material pricing. Um, so we did take a second look to see if there was an additional design or two out there that maybe would be beneficial in terms of uh, advancing um, to, to get to an endpoint of uh, expanding the terminal. And this memorandum goes through the initial uh, design phase, which was for the circular uh, cellular coffer dam. And then we also have a second design uh, that we're calling an O-pile design. And both of those designs uh, basically give you the same capacity, um, so same loading capacity that uh, could be used. The difference is, is just in the constructability of the different designs. Um, cellular coffer dam design is more of a sheet pile design that, uh, you know, designs uh, a circular pot or a circular area across the uh the terminal expansion area where the o pile design is an, a system of interlocking pipe piles um and then it's so if you guys are looking at that memo the first design cellular design is uh shown in cross section in figure one and then option two the o pile construction design you'll you'll see that later in the memo uh as figure two. So the reason, and I guess the reason we're doing this is uh, a couple of, a couple of full uh, idea here. We're thinking that with advancing two designs, um, you're going to get additional contractor uh, support looking at, uh, you know, building this terminal expansion for you. Um, if only advancing the circular cellular coffer dams, um, it it will give you a less less large field of potential bidders. So we're thinking with both of these designs, you're going to get more uh, more contractors bidding on this work. Um, I'm just looking through this as well. Are you able to hear me? Yes, I do. Oh, great. 
great. I just wanted to add on um, to what Troy was presenting. I think said a different way, we, we the cell design is more um, in material cost and it requires a complex template to install the cells. So there's costs that are associated with fabrication um, of that template. And then the methodology is one that not all contractors are experienced with. And then on the other side of the coin, the O pile is a socketed pile operation. So different contractors typically have that in-house capability or relationships with subcontractors. So this really is about just trying to play the bidder's pool, knowing um, that it's a, it depends on you know the type of equipment that they have available, um, which is probably going to be more advantageous. And we've done both types of projects and with the material costs going up, um, since we did the cell design, we thought it was advantageous to look at an alternate, but when we went out to the contractors and discussed it with them, we got mixed feedback in terms of pricing and what would actually be more efficient. So that's part of what drove us to this point. Okay, um, so um, let's, um, Susan or Troy, can you just go um, kind of carry this through as to, um, you know, actually how you want to proceed with, the, you know, the bidding options and then talk about cost for uh, the additional design. Uh, sure, so I, I can start there. So we are, we are basically just about complete with the cellular coffer dam design. So we're, we're ready, we're, we're nearing completion of that. So we'd be ready to put that on the street soon. Um, we haven't we haven't really put together the old pile design other than just doing uh, an options analysis. So there is work to be done there as well. Um, the idea would be then if, if you guys would agree with us in, in advancing both of these designs would be to complete the second old pile, the old pile design, and then basically have two separate bid packages that would go out at the same time. And it would allow for uh, any of the contractors to bid on one or the other or both. And that would give you guys the, the biggest pool, if you will, for selecting a, a contractor. And you guys could you guys could select either the O pile or the cellular coffer dam, depending on what you got back from the contractors. And maybe yeah, with, your, uh, with your recommendation. With That's right. right. That, that's right, Steve. And then, so maybe I'll pause there, Sue and Susan, anything to add to that? Uh, no, I think that covers it, but happy to answer questions or other discussion points. Um, I will say one thing, um, uh, Troy's team and the OBPA and the New York State DOT uh, rail division all met on this, um, on this proper and um, they had no issues in actually encouraged us to uh, to go in this direction it happens all the time the only thing they cautioned us with is to make sure we have all the the language in the bid package so the contractors understand all the rules so that there's no discrepancy when you get two packages someone will say well why we're we were lower on this but you went with this um um and um troy's team is aware of that that um we're going to, and, and I believe the design and the uh, um, specs will have to be reviewed by the DOT so that there's no ambiguity with the uh, bid documents. But I just wanted to make you aware, we, are, we already had this type of meeting with the DOT. Um, it was about two weeks ago, right, Troy? Yeah, that's right. And, and as you were describing there, Steve, the, the specs would be written in such a way that it would clearly uh, spell out to the contractors how the selection process would happen. So, so legally we're covered. Yes. Depending upon whatever option we want to use. Yes. Based, is that going to be mostly based on the cost of the bid, or what it would cost us to pay? For? Susan and Troy, what would you say? Um, conceivably, we could. We could take a higher number due to the fact that availability and our, you know, there could be, a, it wouldn't just strictly be low number on one of the two, uh, 
the two options. Is that correct? It could be a higher number, but we're assured of getting materials and uh, uh, the contractor maybe schedule would be uh, reduced. Is that a fair statement? I think in part, I think what's interesting about this approach is it's different than a single bid that has alternates. A lot of times you have a bid with an alternate that you like a value engineering item or an optional item. This is actually two separate bid packages. So within each bid, you have to award to the lowest responsible bidder. So you could choose, say, say the cells are the lowest Same. bid for the cells is more money than the lowest bid for the O pile. You could still go with the cells, but you have to go with the lowest bid in either. either okay. Spot. Makes sense. So is the um, the basic reason for the other option is it opens up the number of uh, possible bidders that are out there. It may and it may have somewhat to do with um, the cost of the uh, materials needed in the in the project. So it's like a combination of both because of the nature of of the supply chain and whatever else they want to call it now. That's correct. The the cell design is is more material cost. Um, and we've seen that the, the cost for the template and, and just the logistics of installing the template has caused some bidder pools to shrink because not everybody's comfortable with the cells. Conversely, okay. the socketed piles, we don't want to only do that because we think there's some economy of, you know, there's some efficiency with the cell design. So we that's why so, we, we're really hesitant to go one direction or another um, because it's betting on your you know, your dollars that are there. So the, the cost for having the second design, we're hoping will will result in more competitive bids um, across the board. Right. So we're, we're, we're paying for a design option that we didn't have before. Right. It's been, what, four or five years now? Uh, since at least we, four and a half years. Okay, yes. four and a half years. So it's, it's that, and I'm wondering, does it really matter um, which option we go with as far as uh, maybe the life of the of the expansion and what we can do with it? Um, either option will give us what we're looking for for the next 50 years. Yeah, Trey, you have the the table comparison, but we we did um, we did set forth to make them roughly equivalent in terms of service life and capacity. Um, dredge depth, just trying to weigh that all out to get them to be similar so that that wasn't one of the variables in the equation. It really comes down to what the cost will be to okay. get the terminal expansion done within your budget. Um, okay, for, so for the, the you know, there's always a concern back a while ago when I was here before about uh, bedrock in that area. Has there been any testing at all on uh, what would it be the density of the rock there or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, well, they did. We did. Um, the Army Corps really was leading on what was in the channel for for the rock, and that's how they developed their blasting specs, um, which we all know where that ended up for now. Um, these yeah, projects, let's not talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, these projects. <laughs> You'll get me are, trouble. Yeah, no, I'm 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 walking the fine line. I'm coming back to the other side. The, these projects were focused on just doing the birth clearance that's required to get up to the structure, so that you won't be going back and blasting adjacent to the new terminal expan expansion. You'll have an okay. offset, and then the the channel could be cleared. But the the bedrock, you know, we wrote the two designs look at it differently. For the cells, you're sitting on top of the bedrock. Whereas for the socketed, the opile design, you're you're socketing into it, and that's how you're you're getting the the strength. So two very different approaches, both work with with the bedrock that's on site. And you're quite familiar with either. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I practically have done more um, the cop the sheet pile, but um, I'm familiar with the other one with the socketed. Okay. Good. I'm sorry. <laughs> It came, it came to me, so I had to ask a question. So. Dave, do you have some questions? Uh, not necessarily related to this. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, 
Jennifer? Yeah, I don't at, at this point. Um, just one thing though, in the final there, um, basically there's an estimated uh, time and materials cost of approximately $85,000 associated with this. Um, most of that would be reimbursed through the project. It's not, you know, us, but there will be some that will be, and I, I haven't looked into that yet, but I do know that um, New York State DOT is aware of that and um, it, ha it isn't an issue, but I will follow up to be sure that I understand how the, the reimbursement will work on that. But they were very positive um, about going this route um, for all the reasons that you've heard. So it was nothing there, it was nothing new, but we just needed to be sure that they were on board with that, so. Good. So no matter what option uh, we go with, um, this will have no effect on the uh, PLA? No, it's still in effect. Okay. Yes, that will apply to both contracts. Good. We were gonna, I, I thought we were putting, not doing this much thing. Or not much support expansion. We kind of talked about that in the last minute. We really decided we were going to stay keep it open, right? Am I missing something here? No, we decoupled it from the from the dredging. Just Originally, we got that locked in together. So no, no, you're you're right. Because yeah, okay. a, a lot of people have asked me that, but um, originally we were going to go separate. Then we coupled them together and the Corps then, of engineers coupled them together yes and with that we were kind of um working on their timeline and their financial ability and um when all of that disappeared or was no more we decoupled that and we were going on we're, we're going with that expansion of, of just the 500 uh 525 or 550 feet of that new the new dock no dredging no, but there will be, like Susan said, in order to keep that clear for future dredging or blasting, okay. we need to blast away from there um, before that's installed so that there's a buffer zone that we don't come close to damaging what's already there when we eventually go to um, dredging. Yeah. I guess I do have some questions. Thank you. Um, so first of all, um, are all environmental impacts uh, yeah, built every, into this project? Yeah, we're, um, Troy, I don't know, or Susan, we're really piggybacking off of all the work that we've done and the Corps has done as far as environmental um, permits and things like that. Is that correct? That's right. It's That's the, yeah, the, the permits are in place already for the for the work. Yeah, they, they're in place for the cellular design, so we would just notify what we would consider a minor modification to the permits if we if you decide to award the O-Pile design. The, the impacts are really comparable. Okay. okay, and just my next question is, and I'm sorry if you've already covered this, but what is our timeline? Like timeline when the both bids come in, that we evaluate that, get started. Are we looking at within a year, a couple months? I, I don't know. I. I don't know if we see of anything going in the fall, Troy or Susan. Um, I think where we're sitting right now, and Susan, you can certainly jump in. I think you know the design part of this a little better than I do. Um, we, I think we could still probably do something this fall, but we'd have to really start to fast track, in my opinion. Yeah, because uh, we want to give a long enough bid window so that um, contractors could it, it might be tight because by the time if you even if, if you award at the end of summer it depends on the lead time for materials whether they'd be able to have the the steel to start before winter really set right. in yeah so i would say well, I in, we start with the drilling and blasting anyway right because we need to do that before the structure so it's possible yeah and then i don't know do we get into any uh, uh areas where we can't work um in the beginning of spring on the river um for next year yeah, I believe in the permits there are some fish windows, but I don't recall what they are offhand, Steve, but I could definitely look into that. But what, yeah, so okay. to try to, I think originally if we were uh, a little earlier, we were trying to do like a year and a half total timeline and the idea would be December of 24, but I, I think according to, you know, what we're talking about now, you're probably looking at 18 months spread over two years 
Okay. So does that make yes. sense to you? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Would that, that, that'd be correct, wouldn't it? Probably 18 months of construction over a 24 year, a 24 month period. That sounds right to me, Susan. I guess I, I'm not sure exactly the duration for the construction. Yeah, that sounds right. And we'd have to, again, want to see contractor schedules because yeah. how they would sequence it. Because it's not only the construction, they have to get that pre drudge, the pre excavation work done. Okay. okay. Makes sense. Yes. Okay. And I have one more question again. I'm sorry if this is just really obvious, but you okay, did. So with the expansion, it will still be able to be utilized fully without the dredging project happening. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's Great. The federal you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the dredging not just putting a dock had... there and not having any access to it. Right. I just wanted to make sure like, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I know that there's going to be blasting and, and whatnot, but just wanted to ask. No. All right. Thank you. Good question. Okay. I better not say too much more. Is everybody? I am. Any, you guys got any questions? Okay. What are you looking for from us? Um, approval to move forward. You'll give me a formal uh, uh, quotation on the additional work that I can bring to the board and get it approved uh, next month? Yeah, sure, we can definitely do that. Okay, so I will be coming back to the board with a, um, a request for additional uh, uh, approval to go with the additional design. A, a recommendation from this committee? Yes, a recommendation from the committee too. Yeah, I make the motion that we go with the um, the two option bidding process and uh, approve the additional funding that will require that to be done. Okay. I'll second. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Troy, Susan, thank you for your time. I appreciate this. Thank and you. We'll, we'll be talking later in more detail. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sounds good, thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Yep. Okay, good. good. All right. That sounds positive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. It is good. I think we can. All right, uh, moving right along, okay. item 1B, the Augsburg uh, Airport, International Airport. 1B, yeah, 1, 1B1 1 and 1B1 and 1B2. Yeah, so just to give you some just to kind of start this conversation off, we're all familiar with the, the airport expansion and event center that we've undertaken. And the staff has been working behind the scenes on trying to see what we can do to have more value added sub projects to this main project to make it as successful as possible. And one of those such things, there's a couple of things on the agenda for tonight to just go over briefly. Um, uh, but one of the most important was um, we've been in conversations with uh, Julie Margo of uh, Margo Designs in regards to signage and wayfinding on adding to how do you get customers once this beautiful building is built and everything's ready to go, how do, how do we effectively get people there? And then while they're there, how do we um, increase their experience, you know, their positive customer experience and, and de-stress the whole traveling um, experience. So, so Julie's going to give us a some a presentation. She's going to explain more about wayfinding and signage, and then um, how how it could really benefit benefit us and our project. Um, and just as as the chairman had always been asking um, for the state to come and help us with some signage, and it just never seemed to go anywhere with trying to make contacts and. Quite frankly, we wanted more than just plain green and white signs right. going airport here and there. We wanted to kind of make it more of a slight branding thing, but also um, something that once you got off the bridge, whether you were French Canadian or English, you um, would have no problem finding not just the airport, but maybe some other things there. So that's kind of the genesis of uh, um, what we're doing here. So right. go ahead. Sorry. Great. Great. Hi guys, how are you? 
okay hello <laughs> are we on we're on right yes, yes you yeah. are i'm not real familiar with this uh, go to meeting so i may need some some wayfinding guidance to get there <laughs> to put my screen up um but uh, thank you for for having us uh, i'm julie julie margot um i'm a designer and i uh, specialize in wayfinding projects uh, leading often to major, major signage uh, and wayfinding projects for transportation or mobility facilities, um, but also uh, corporations or institutions, hospitals, whatever, whoever may need the help uh, helping people. Um, I'm here with my colleague, uh, Charles, Charles Moran. So good afternoon, I'm Charles and I work with Julie. I'm, I'm really taking care of the uh, more the uh, business side of uh, our, our business, as well as the sort of the whole client relationship and experience. So I have a background in business, international business, for uh, in, in the high tech sector for a number of years, and I've been, you know, I've known Judy for over 20 years, and we've been sort of collaborating on and off for uh, a number of years. But you know, now we're we're part of a team. So um, I'm not sure, uh, Anthony. Would it be possible maybe to just do a quick name around the table so we know who we're we're talking to certainly we could we could we can start with you all right james you start with james <laughs> james chase director of operations all okay. right yeah. Tom Trek, director of economic development steve lawrence executive director eddie nisco chief financial officer david king board member chair of the facilities committee uh sam burns board chair jennifer pickman uh, board member and also member of the facilities committee Okay, great. And there's nobody else out in that digital world somewhere? No? <laughs> no? Okay, good. <laughs> um, so, uh, let's see. So, how, how do I, um, Anthony, how, how do I share my screen? Are you able to? Or, or if it's easier, I would, I could have you put it up. It might, it might be easier to do that. Yeah, maybe we'll do that, Julie. We have that right here. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. It'll be quicker. We'll save Great. it. Just save. All right. Next slide. Next slide. <laughs> so this, the only thing is I can't see what you're looking at. So. Uh, oh. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> go ahead and shoot to start. She should be able to share her screen right after that. Share screen. Is, is there an easy way to uh, go to the menu to share our screen? Yeah, you should be able to. There should be. A There's a, it's uh, called show screen. Um, where am I looking at? Uh, be under here. Sharing options. In options. Yes. My webcam, webcam, okay. Uh, pull, on the, pull down here, maybe there's a, no, that's the webcam. No, okay. Um, well, let's see, uh, how about, can you see the first page? Yeah, let's start on the first page, Julie, and then when you want to move on, we'll just go, we'll just move uh, the slide, so go back to the yeah, original yeah, first okay, page. Let's do that. Let's do that. We're 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 pretty familiar with it, so we should be okay. Um, so so oh, oh okay great. I see something there. Uh, the, the the page says we spend a lot of time. Okay, there's your introductory. And now you're on page two. Okay, but okay, perfect. So um, yeah, uh, this little quote came up, and I thought it was quite um, effective in communicating. Um, a bit of our, our role in this type of project um, as a building or uh, any type of a physical um, element well in, in this case we have a really important bridge um, so there was there's always a lot of thinking about how to build something how to build a bridge how to build a put up a building um, but often people get overlooked so the users are there and we have to put some uh, time and and concentration on them uh, how they use it um, and, and the things we can do to make that uh, a nice experience so that's kind of how we come into play um, and you can go to the next next page i wonder if you don't have the control i don't know 
So uh, this little chart, this is quite interesting because we're talking about people using uh, facilities. So in, in this case, we're really, the airport is what we're aiming at, what we're working on, but we also have people coming across an international bridge, which is quite important. Um, we know that these, these two elements are really uh, linked together. Um, and this growth that, that we see with this chart, it's, it's really amazing. Um, we, we realize it's pre-pandemic, um, but we hope we can be involved in helping you get back to these numbers and then, again, doubling them up every couple of years. That would be a, a great goal to have. <laughs> so you can move ahead to the next page. Um, so, so again, we, we really understand. I, I, I'm from the area. I grew up in Lisbon and Waddington, New York. So uh, I know the culture of the place and I know the importance of the bridge. Um, and I know also there's this real binding relationship between the bridge and the Ogdensburg Airport. Uh, so if, if one's having a great success, uh, it goes hand in hand with the other. Um, so again, that's that's kind of says where we come from. Um, my, my firm and, and our focus really is about delivering a strategic design solution. Um, what makes us quite different from many others is the fact that we're really human-centered. That's our approach. Um, of course, we, we listen to all the client needs, uh, their vision and goals, and um, all the business perspective. Uh, and sometimes Charles has to also get me reoriented that way if we go too far elsewhere. Um, but the, the difference is really this idea about keeping an eye on the user who's who's using the the what's being uh, focused on. So um, we have a really a, a special interest in this, uh, of, of a love for it and a talent for observing and understanding people's needs uh, and then going on to try to figure out, okay, what tools do we need to provide the client with um, that's going to help the users, so help them navigate a place, uh, a product or a service. So um, places like hospitals or like airports, train stations can be quite complex uh, places to be in. So our job is to make it easier for them to, to use. Um, so again, thank you. We're excited to have an opportunity. Um, we hope to be working with you all. So next steps. So uh, can you go to the next page? So uh, this, this, is, uh, this is exactly the situation we, we hope not to have happen, at least not too often. Um, this could be getting lost in, in Hewilton on the way to the airport <laughs> or something. So uh, we can't always, uh, think that digital media uh, is going to take us to our place uh, without any issues. So we do have to put some um, attention on physical elements. And that's what we're going to talk about. So you can go to the next page. So I don't know, did that, did that work? Did we turn it or did you turn it? So. Okay, so uh, as I said, be, being lost is not really a, a fun thing usually, uh, and if we're heading to uh, to get our flight to go on vacation, it can be really a miserable thing to have happen. Um, so, so we know that the the Ogdensburg International Airport it's it's a rural airport, it's a smaller facility, um, so we could think that that's actually making uh, someone's journey or travel easier. Um, but we can't forget that any type of air travel or, or travel period is always conjunctive to some amount of anxiety or, or stress. Um, so this particular journey that we could think about from, from Canada coming over to the, the airport, because for all sorts of reasons, it may be a much better um, a much better deal to, to do and easier, um, but it includes crossing borders. Uh, it includes going through customs and security. Uh, for many people, it could be a different language, currency and exchange rate. Uh, we can't forget about measuring systems like speed uh, and also possibly mobility modes that could differ. 
Um, so we have a very imposing bridge. Uh, there's some shared roadway between the bridge and the airport. And eventually there'll be a, a beautiful, more than 11,000 square feet finished new terminal. Uh, and also an advantageous parking situation, which is long and short term parking. So. No. <laughs> Next page. <laughs> So uh, something else, uh, you know, not not to forget is that uh, travel planning, um, like many things, it, it really starts way before we get into a vehicle or or set our foot out to walk somewhere. Uh, it's often at home and it's often on a website uh, looking for the best prices or the easiest way to get somewhere. Um, so it's it's often our first. Uh, into intuition or perceptions of what our, our, our travel may be like. Um, so again, this, this the new terminal uh, renovation and expansion project is quite an important investment. Um, and it's also going to be looked at as a, a multi-purpose space and a concept welcoming visitors to the North Country. So, um, you know, our understanding is that you're um, investing also uh, in a new, maybe updated as well, responsive uh, visual identity, uh, a wayfinding system with the elements needed to uh, fulfill the new functions of this particular space. Uh, so it's really an indisputable importance um, that these, these assets emphasize uh, your organization's efforts really to uh, and your desire to build an exemplary project in the region and if i may add also to cat to cater to uh, thinking about a canadian uh, audience is like a you know let's keep in mind that you're you're an hour drive away from ottawa and there's 1.4 million uh, people living there and you're the closest u.s airport um and i think that we're, we're thinking here about like a, a thinking from an international perspective, making sure that we have something which is not just local and regional, but people could identify with uh, remotely. So from Montreal, being from Montreal, or it, it could be even Plattsburgh or, or Ottawa, it's, uh, you know, having something at that, that level that would match that requirement of the, the uh, international traveling passenger. Mm -hmm. So uh, n next page. So uh, what, what we're going to do is a little exercise that, that we start with just to kind of get a feeling um, for what everyone's looking at what they're, and what you're working with as well. Um, so, so this, uh, bear, bear with us for the moment because most of these images are, are Google. Um, uh, they might not be the most actual or up to date, but I think they, they convey a, a pretty good idea of what we're working with. So uh, the typical experience today for someone coming from Canada across the bridge and into the US heading to the airport, and you can go to the next page. So, so just an idea. So w welcome to, the, the, to New York State and um, I'm heading to the airport and the first information that I get is a small sign um, with an airplane. Um, making it some equivalence to the boat landing or the boat uh, ramp, ramp. boat ramp um and i'm not sure if it's the airport i'm looking for but uh, I, it's the only one we have so we'll, we'll take it <laughs> we'll go with that so uh, you can go to the next shot next page so so again i, I realize there's different ways um, to come into the airport so we, i'm kind of mixing a couple up but uh, th these two signs in particular are quite close to one one another um, but after our first little pictogram now we have airport and we've we've lost the pictogram so i've kind of lost my my flow of directions uh and on the other on the right hand side if we're coming in from uh, from morristown uh, we have a sign now that's Ogdensburg Airport. It's the first time we've seen Ogdensburg Airport next right, but we've also lost again our, our pictogram, which which is a visual information, but it's very important for people to uh, to key into. Um, also, you, you'll notice we've we've just looked at three signs, and not one of them are have anything identical or anything in common. 
Um, and interestingly enough, the first panel we see, which is our most important, um, is actually the most ambiguous panel of all of them. So that's probably something that we can could fix a bit. Um, can you go to the next page? So, oh, other way? Okay, so here, so we're arriving at the airport, and again, I realize we've, we come in, we would be coming from the other direction, but Google had the sign better on this direction, so we'll take it. So again, now all of a sudden we have another sign for airport, um, and we have our, our welcoming sign to the Ogdens, Ogdensburg Airport, and I'm entering to the airport, and I have the, a digital sign which is actually telling me an exit from from another airport so could be confusing for some people um it it's old but that's what what's yeah. happening yeah so I, I realize it's a digital dynamic sign it changes messages but that's our welcome welcome sign so uh, we can go ahead to page 12. So again, uh, and I know I realize some of these may have changed. I realize it's also actual airport, and we're we're going to move ahead to future. But for now, it's it's a good um, it's kind of a good experiment to to look at these these um, types of supports and communications that have been used. Um, so we see parking information again, only U.S. dollars. Maybe now there's like a, a credit card or a different way to do that. Um, we're inside the airport and we see ticketing check-in information but it's also um, very closely related to baggage claim which is usually uh, a rival type of information so we're kind of mixing up two different types of journeys on that side so can we go to the next panel next page and again, these are our, they're also kind of picked out of the web, so I, I didn't have, I don't have fresh or the most recent images, but again, we realize there's some congestion around the ticketing area, um, difficult, difficulty to see the uh, information above the, the ticketing desk. Um, I think if there were people standing there, they would probably uh, cut my view to that area. So, I know these are all the reasons that there's going to be a great new terminal on its way. <laughs> so these things will get fixed. Um, then we have another step, uh, probably the most nerve wracking is going through some type of a security uh, and then breathing a f you know, relief when we cross the, the gate or the door into the, the holding area. So next page. So holding area uh, for our flight. Um, and then there we would typically look for the gate number to go out to the tarmac for our, our flight. Um, so can you, next page. And one more, uh, one more photo that this is interesting. There's you, you, um, there's actually um, pictograms used here. Um, usually the pictograms are more visible than the text. So something also to think about how how you can use those to your advantage. So next page. So so out of all that, um, you know, we we arrived from the bridge and we've already got that first panel still in our memory. Um, it, I, I like this quote because you never get a second chance to make a, a great first impression. So so for the the, the new project, um, of course, it'll be great to have a fantastic <laughs> a fantastic impression. So um, how can we do that? Uh, working with wayfinding design strategists and, and specialists. Um, next page. So, so we realize we have a new environment. There's going to be a new architecture. And this has, it's going to have fantastic impact. Uh, and it's going to really create a new sense of place. So something really important for the region um, from the, the drawings that I've seen uh, I think it's, it's going to be fantastic and um, the multi-purpose space also will be a, an interesting element to see how that's used. So there's this idea of the architecture and then next page. Then with the architecture, we can work on a, a wayfinding 
uh, strategy and design uh, that's integrated into that plan. Um, obviously, wayfinding is there to make it easier for people to, to understand a space uh, and to move around it, so um, mobility issues. Um, also, putting them in easy contact with your services, uh, your products, and all the contact or touch points that they may have to go through to get through the process and to their, their flight. Now, I'll do a link between wayfinding and consistency of the experience also. Um, so, so to have, like, as we saw in the, the, the initial sort of group of uh, uh, slides of the current situation, that probably have changed since then, but still there, there's like a lot of in inconsistency as you go from home to the actual gate. And I think this is a big, that's a very important point is like in, in terms of wayfinding to have to, to have consistency throughout the experience and to make sure that there's, you know, you don't create any other, you know, additional stress, but you make sure that you, you know, you, you, you make the, the, the experience as, as effortless and as, as easy to flow as possible. Okay, thank you. So uh, next page. So we've got we've got the architecture, we've got a building, and then we've got a wayfinding in place. So all the messaging and the signs to get us through, and the other little little but really important aspect is your signature. So I use the term visual signature. It's it sounds nicer than logo, um, but basically it's your signature, and that signature is your commitment to your clients, your employees, and your community. So it means you take it seriously and they can see that. And it's something that's um, an image that's seen not only in the airport, but it's something that um, vehicles itself through your website and through your communications material. So it's helping make that link to everything. So if we go to the next page. <clears throat> So, so taking these three elements, it's a, it's a recipe. They're the three main ingredients, and we combine them together. So, ideally, the end result is having information that's clear, <clears throat> timely, and relevant in the way that users move through a space or use a product, again, a product or service. And the impact on this is capitalizing on your investment. So we'll talk about that a bit more at the at the end. Um, keep go to the next page. So uh, just to to show, um, you know, we we've seen some of the the actual um, uh, signs and communications and messaging that's in place today. Um, what can we do? What we're talking about? I wanted to show some visual um, examples of that. So I, there's three uh, three airports that I, I that we we picked. Um, obviously Berlin, it's it's not the same size, but but I think you you'll understand really. Uh, it's very clear, wonderful project. Uh, Fort McMurray also it's quite interesting, and Jackson Hole. Um, the three of these, what they have in common is that they've had design teams working on these projects with architects. Um, they've applied universal design standards, uh, also ADA standards, standards which are um, accessibility standards, um, and they apply types of best practice uh, in wayfinding design. So I'm going to kind of go through this quickly so we can have time for exchange, but um, go ahead to the next page. Uh, again, so Berlin, it's a bit different. We've, we've got over 30 million passengers a year. So, well, something we can think about for Augensburg, <laughs> but we're not quite there yet. So um, go ahead to the next page. And, and I also know they've been working on this project for, the, the designers have been working on it for more than eight years. So it's every time there's a new terminal that's built or something comes up, they're involved with it. But what makes it nice is there's a program in place so they can expand it. Um, also, what's interesting here is right from the, the the um, exterior entrance to the terminal. Um, they've taken into consideration mobility issues and immediately we have this red color, the red burgundy. So you'll see on the next slide, or next page, sorry. Now we arrive inside and we immediately are confronted with our information, but it's, it's in this red color. So it's very easy to find. Uh, it's very clean, 
and it presents itself well. So uh, go ahead to the next next page. Again, we have the same color come back. So we have a choice of typography that's very clean, easy to read, integrates itself onto uh, stationary signage, but also into digital signage. Again, the color, the color palette, it's consistent from the outside to the inside. It's the same color, same language. So it's easy to follow through the airport. So again, next, next page. So here, here we're at the, the holding area and going out our gate. So it's A33. You can't miss it. It's easy. And we understand it's part of our uh, airport instructions because it's, again, the same font and the same color. So next page. So, so in this project, too, they, they went a step further. They actually created a whole family of pictograms for the project. Um, again, they have this color palette is used really consistency all the time. So just overall, it creates a coherent, consistent system, makes it easy for the visitor to follow throughout. And if you go to the next page, um, it's even incorporated throughout their communications material. So I don't know if it's completely all advertising like this, but again, we have the same color palette come back. They even use some of the, the pictograms uh, for, for communicating uh, different types of information. So, uh, go ahead, next page. Uh, so, so on, on this, uh, on this, so it's Fort McMurray. Um, this one got picked for a bit of a different reason. Uh, it's a smaller airport, uh, but the architecture, the architectural project actually has a lot of, um, uh, conceptually, it's some similarities with the Ogdensburg project. So, if you go to the next page. Um, you know, again, it has some of this, the wood uh, material. It's, it's not in a city center. It's more in a semi-rural open space. Um, next page. So again, inside we have the, these really open areas, these high ceilings, the, the materiality with the wood uh, gives a really nice feeling to it. Um, and here, uh, this, this image shows um, languages. So they really built a program off of pictograms. Uh, it's, it's in every language. A pictogram says it all. It's, uh, it's well placed. Uh, the contrast is there. Uh, easy to understand. Next page. Um, and here again in the same, uh, same airport, um, you notice there's there's well they're very clean obviously they're architectural <laughs> photos um but yet it's showing just very easy to find information so we have the ticketing the ticketing desk and again the same material the wood frames the um the digital screens uh, everything is connected together uh easy to pinpoint easy to find easy steps to your trip uh and next page and again, here we're we're near the holding gate uh, and gate two to go to go off on our flight. So once again, uh, easy to find our, our our numbers, our door. Uh, everything's clean, uh, simple. So uh, next next project, next page. Um, this one too is uh, chosen for for a little bit of a different reason. Uh, Jackson Hole Airport, um, it's the only airport in the United States in, um, in, a, uh, in one of the parks, parks services and parks area, National Park. Um, and the, these guys really uh, work on the brand experience. Uh, and if you go to the next page, you'll understand. Uh, so this brand experience, it starts once you're on their website, uh, obviously it's it's talking about what your airport experience is going to be like. Uh, I'd like to go and just have coffee at the airport. I'd, <laughs> I'd be fine with that. So uh, it holds true if you go to the next uh, page. Uh, so you get there and I mean, it's, it's an amazing uh, location obviously and the building is relatively new 
you can see some of their signage project out in the front. It's everything is very integrated. The colors, the color palette, um, the material, again, all fitting into this overall brand uh, experience. Um, next, next page. Uh, and again, this is inside, so they're really talking about their local culture. Uh, the logo for this airport is the uh, JH, like a branding signature on uh, on horses at the, the time. Um, again, everything is integrated together, so it's a, a total immersion, a total experience. So next page. So I'm... Uh, oh, I'll... I'll keep going, but yeah. you can jump in yeah, when you'd yeah. like. So um, we're, we're getting to the part where it's, uh, what's the impact of a project, uh, uh, wayfinding strategy? Um, so the impact, the bottom line, uh, that's okay, you can, next page. Um, what, it, what it offers, so for, for the guest, how we, we'll break it down for, for the different people involved. Uh, but your most important, asset is having the guests come and come back often and and also um, promote their experience. So having a, a really fluid and easy uh, to identify wayfinding experience, um, it helps people find particular features or services. So we, we may have uh, accessibility issues for elderly people um, or for possibly handicapped or mo mobility issues uh, so we can easier easier um, it's easier to highlight these um, types of services that could be available um, and also it makes it easier for uh, people to go through the process so it also go through the pro process but flow through it and those are important issues uh, at a small airport when you have probably very punctual uh, flight schedules so uh, you know, we have 40 people arrive 10 minutes before their flight. So how do we how do we get them through the different phase, uh, steps to their to take the flight? Um, so overall, all of these things just help strengthen uh, people's satisfaction uh, and their confidence in using that that particular airport, the place. So next page. Um, also very important is for the management, of course, for the, the facilities operation. Um, we want things to go smoothly. So when people understand where they have to go or what they have to do, it takes a lot of stress out of the employees trying to run the place. Um, also, we can think about the idea that we're expanding something in the next two years, uh, but ideally a zero chart that we saw in the very beginning that that multiplies and doubles itself every two years we'd like to keep pushing those types of goals if that happens you have to expand eventually again so ideally is that there's a project in place that's scalable uh, and also sustainable so in the future we can take that same base and keep using it for furthering your terminal T2 and T3 that come to Optinsburg. Again, also important, attracting new partnerships. You have a great space and it's everyone's happy with it and it's easy to use. Well, then probably different carriers or different other partnerships that could be local will be interested in, in participating uh, in the project. Because they're also customers, right? They're also mm -hmm. customers. So, and then I think we're talking about here about sort of building and strengthening uh, credibility for the airport, and and making sure that you know the, all the wayfinding and the visual identity of the airport is is up to par to what's expected by the uh, by the different airline that are coming over. So I think that this would you know this is something that's instrumental in, in sort of helping develop this new partnership as the airport grows and passenger traffic grows. Okay, uh, next page. So uh, I know that this has also been very important from the beginning and um, it's also part of the architectural concept uh, is to have more community space uh, at, at this particular spot. Um, so, so it's important for the community to, to also recognize the local business partners. Um, there could be local partners that are uh, food services, uh, taxi or uh, limousine services. 
Uh, there's all sorts of things, uh, tourism that could develop um, and kind of generate this idea too about the local cultural experience um, and to share in that sense of place. So the last page, almost. <laughs> Um, so for all the stakeholders, uh, you know, this idea about a regional signature actually doesn't come from me. It's already coming from the people I've spoken with around the table there. Um, it seems to really be a, a vision to be able to uh, take this investment and really make it into a, an important signature for, for the region. So, yeah, And also within a competitive space, because there's also new, we understand that this other regional airport that also are, are going through the same, you know, they, they get funding to renewed infrastructure. And I think that I, I sort of look at it also from a, a competitive you know, point of view and making sure that you, you sort of can, you know, have, have all the, uh, the, the what, what's necessary to compete, you know, against these other things, these other uh, airport. And uh, again, I still want to do the link with Canada and, and Ottawa and that you're really the prime airport the prime access point for for a lot of canadian uh, to take like these uh, u.s flights um, you know and this is this there's a big advantage to uh, to to further investigate that that uh, that point so uh, next page um i'm not sure time wise how we're doing here so um I kind of go quickly through this but obviously if you can share this uh, pdf and and you know, if there are more questions we can go through. But here, um, if you go uh, next page, so kind of just put in uh, um, some some different um, phases that are happening uh, and their correlation to each other. So uh, there's been an architectural uh, concept done, which I, I've seen, um, and I think you're you're working to to move ahead with that. So um, that's one one element that's moving, uh, and then the next page. Um, so so this is just showing. Um, you might be wondering. So how, how does wayfinding design strategy team where where do they fit in into this? Um, can we do that? You know, next year. Um, no, <laughs> please don't. <laughs> uh, ideally. Uh, in a project like this, um, wayfinding uh, strategy is really uh, ha has to work a lot with the client to really understand their goals um, and the project manager, project facilities manager to understand the needs uh, that are coming up uh, and to be able to think through what are the best item, what are the best uh, tools. Uh, to design and put in place for the project. And at the same time, there's some communication necessary with the architectural team to make sure that things fit with them as well and that, that everyone can be very satisfied with the results. Um, are there ways to integrate, as we saw in some of the uh, examples, uh, signage elements into the structure? Uh, that might make it easier to take care of for maintenance uh, or for uh, hooking up electricity to a sign for lighting, etc. Uh, placing screens in a spot where they're easy to see and not having a conflict with light from the big windows or you know things like that. So, um, so it's really important to have this discussion uh, happening, the, kind of the circle going on of making sure that that the, the the power sockets are in the right spot when 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 they're needed um, and once once we get through that process uh, and there's construction documents are made uh, not only from the architects but for the signage tools or elements then there's a bidding process usually uh, so we we would help uh, the client we would help you uh, going through that and picking out a sign builder or a sign fabricator um, and those documents would be handed over to them and then they would build out they would build out the project uh, and do the installation phase of it so that's kind of, that's kind of the way we, we typically operate on this type of project um, if you go to the next slide um, 
again, this is very preliminary. It's based on conversations we've had and, and my knowledge of some of the time frame. Um, but again, there's there's an element, the, the visual identity logo that that's kind of pre precursor um, precursor <laughs> to, to all of these things. That that's something that needs to probably get moving uh, so that it's available to be integrated into the space or the wayfinding signage design. Um, again, I'm not sure about this calendar specifically, but architecture, so I, I moved it over a year. Um, wayfinding and signage design can should also follow along the same phases with the architects. So there's there's kind of a, a you know going in steps that they relayed and there's a lot of feedback and information. Uh, it, it certainly doesn't mean that we're working uh, 24 hours a day for a year. That's that's not the case. But it's what's important is just to be able to follow the steps. Um, and then uh, you were talking about a soft hopefully groundbreaking uh, spring at 2024. And again, that would be the time there's construction happening and the sign fabrication would process would start. And um, from my experiences here, uh, after the pandemic um, sign fabrication, I just did a recent project, which was smaller than the airport project you're looking at. And it took over six months to get material and just built, not even installed, but just built. So pro problems with ma getting material and also labor. So it's kind of something to be be attentive to, I think. Um, <clears throat> then I, I have, there's two more pages after this, and that's really a little bit more detailed um, <clears throat> phases of pr the projects. <coughs> Excuse me, but uh, we don't need to go through that really. Um, I think it would be more important. We'd, we'd be interested in having, you know, answering any questions or an exchange. And uh, again, as I say, we can we'll certainly leave you with this for, uh, for you can digest it and come back with any questions. I have a question. First of all, thank you, Julie and Charles, for your presentation. Um, I guess my question would be then, your services would encompass signage from the moment someone crosses the bridge, so you're looking at the project would encompass signage on the roads or on the route to the airport, then carrying all throughout the airport, is that correct? Well, so, so to be clear on that, um, there was a lot of conversation about the uh, road signage. So that's um, Department of Transportation signage. Um, and we haven't, we're not officially working on the project yet, but from our knowledge of what we're seeing is, I think uh, they can probably play a very important role in identifying the airport. Uh, it needs to be better done. Uh, it needs to be coherent and consistent but yes, those are those green road signs. And that's not your budget. That's the State Department's budget and work to do. But I think they need, um, well, first of all, if you have a strategy in place that says, look, we need five signs between point A and point B to be efficient, then that could be proposed to them. And at the same time, there should be a nominal way of writing the name of the airport and if we want a pictogram with it, it should always be the same pictogram. So th those are types of um, kind of a, an outline that could be built uh, after studying how we come across and how we move through the steps where we have to turn to get to the airport, etc. Um, so I, I, I don't have, um, uh, how do I say it? Yes, we can be effective in helping you find the right strategy on the road, uh, but we wouldn't be responsible for those uh, Department of Transportation panels. Right, so. understood, okay. But you would, I guess I was just, what I was getting at is you would be available to be consultants or help facilitate placement, perhaps a logo, a pictogram, okay. Yes, yes for, sure. for sure, yes, yes.
any other questions or so i mean was it was it i guess it was it answering sort of your your question regarding what we the, our role would be in such a project yeah i think so i think you're good right yes yes thank you Julian Charles, thank you so much. This was a perfect introduction for the for the facilities committee on the topic, and um, at least everyone has good exposure to what what we would uh, what we would be bringing forward in the future. Um, it would be, nothing would be a surprise. <laughs> so okay. thank you, thank you both so much. Thank, thank you very much. much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. And, and I think too, if, if you have you know, if there's further points that maybe are not clear or um, that you'd like to exchange on certainly don't hesitate to uh, to be back in touch with that yeah i mean what what, what would be the next step from from here on so we we still need to to look at the overall project and see where the implementation would be and then also a, a major factor is identifying sources of funding um so i will i'll loop back with you both offline um and then we could go from there okay okay, okay. perfect but the important thing is that just to, to keep in mind that we're available so if there's any question any any point that needs to be addressed i mean we're, we're here to answer all, any of your your questions great good all thank right you. excellent thank you thank, thank you. you thank you thank you thank you thank you make sure i can quit the application Okay. So at the moment, okay. Action no action at this time. No. So with that, we'll move on to uh, any other any else that yeah. just I guess they're off now. Funding. Yeah. Uh, is that not? Is it so we're maybe potentially hiring these folks differently or separately? Or? So I I don't. No, for sure at this point if we could if there's enough project funding to be able to commit from new york state mm -hmm. or from the federal level so that's where we have that serious conversation on mm -hmm. yes it's a value-added service it could really put us <laughs> across the finish line plus but can we afford it and that's you know, um, one of the things i noted while they were talking was if we reached it was interesting they, they mentioned some airports right should we call should we call Jackson Hole and Fort McMurray and ask them about what they did? So those were it's my understanding those are exam those were examples of what those airports did, but I do don't believe that Margot designs. I understand had, that. Okay. But just um it's a phone call. Yeah, certainly, <laughs> certainly. Yeah. Is that something yeah. you could do if you're entertaining that? That's yeah, something. absolutely. Yeah. I, I was Here, interested uh, design she said a couple things that, so it's important, right? It's yeah. Things you don't think about. Yeah. And I've always said that the engineer designs it, they build it to be whatever right. it is, but they don't ever think about it to use it. Yeah. Right. And they um, talked about a logo. I said, well, what would we use for a logo in Ogden for a jail? You know? <laughs> <laughs> the bridge. The bridge. The, a running I, tank. I don't know. We have to think bridge. about what our logo yeah. would be. Right. right. So, right. Yeah. It was just interesting that that was done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I have a, a, qu a question. I didn't mean to interrupt. Are you done, Dave? Yeah, I didn't mean to jump in. Um, so if we if we um, discover that there is not funding, mm -hmm. you know, for a service like this, um, who or what part of the team would sort of fill in, you know, signage mm -hmm. and colors and I mean, right. what would that, who would that person be or yeah, what would their title be? Um, well, project? I mean, the way it stands now without them, uh -huh. the, the terminal proper would be done through the project. Through the what, right. what we're looking for is a, a cohesive right. thing all the way through. So right. let's just say we had the money and we were hiring them. Right. We would, I would say we'd have to um, work with them and um, integrate them in with the design team of the airport right. okay. on that way but without that um you know you know we can say what we want to see but we're not the experts right um and then um you know that terminal has some issues the terminal now right and that was done by our engineers and 
um, we want to see something a, a lot, you know, more cohesive and just to what they were talking about. Right. So, um, but it's not like the, the terminal will go um, unsigned and everything. And um, knowing that, we can put a heavier emphasis on that. Right. But, it, um, you know, it could be a, could be two things. It could be we did the terminal and then when we find the, the money um, to do the whole thing. You got to realize, too, don't just think of the bridge. You got to mm -hmm. think of Mercer Town. You got to think of 68. You think oh, of right, right, right. No, but I, I get focused on it. Mm -hmm. then, I, then I realize, you know, you need that whole, um, and it would be so much better if we could, you know, we're that far ahead, right, or, you know, in the, the planning stages that it'd be ideal to do that. But, um, you know, it's just like everything, we, you know, we have to do pick our battles on, mm -hmm. on that, but um, it was just so much, uh, what they offer is so much more than just green and white mm -hmm. state signs, that type of thing to where you're building, you know, a brand and um, with that. So that's kind of our, the point of bringing them in. We've been, Nancy's been talking to them for over a year or almost a year now. Yeah, I remember when you made the right. introduction. That right. was, yeah. So I think, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I mean, I this could just be like way I could be completely off base, just sort of thinking outside the box, jumping ahead to the scenario that the funding is not there. Okay, but we're doing this project and this is our shot to really, you know, make some great decisions around it. Are there other resources like perhaps at Clarkson, a graphics design? I class or anything like that that could no not not i, would, I know it wouldn't I be, be comfortable with it it'd be just it's, okay it's okay. kind of no i don't mean it no i way. just just yeah yes there are but then you think of you know the coordination you need and the oversight you need on those people and um okay. you know i you you might you're, you're a yeah it's it's yeah it's tough it's yeah, tough when you take it away okay. from a from a, a consultancy that just does that right okay and thinks of it from the broader perspective you probably could get elements done by individuals right but then you'd have to have the extra piece to package okay. it together and i think that's where that that would be lacking for okay. those uh, okay yeah but yeah and we're certainly you know uh trying to identify grant opportunities mm -hmm. if we can add to the project we're not you know this mm -hmm. is we have to kind of run it down and and, and find the funding that's what mm -hmm. is what our goal is well, maybe something like the uh, <clears throat> I love the art funding. Mm -hmm. uh, get a different allotment. I, I don't know what's out there. But it's a possibility, but we've never had to think before about what else do we do at the airport other than fly out airplanes. So now we're going to have a community center or whatever you want to call it with events out there. So I think that changes our our need for advertising and how we do it. If we're market. really gonna, you know, uh, what I was hoping, um, bring activities out there uh, so that it not only makes revenue for us, and that's part of what we need to do, but it provides a um, place for people in the region to, to go for whatever events may be out there. So maybe their expertise in signage and how we can change that for different events. I have no idea, but if they can help us with that, uh, it may be something that we've never thought about before. Again, all within a budget mm -hmm. uh, and funding for it. Um, that's always there. We could. Uh... We could talk to strategic development and say, um, what what are there any programs out there that we could get partial funding for right. or something? And, and um, the beauty of it is, is we've got you know their expertise, but also we have a we have a, a lot of design and renderings um, already there that you could bring to a say a grant application. Yeah. But we could ask them explain our problem and see um, if we, there's a fit out there that we could get maybe some partial. Um, I mean, I've always found with us is um, the best thing you can do is break it down to the minimal to say to them, what can you do for us just as a minimal start so we get started, mm -hmm. we can buy time. 
and maybe in the meantime we can find money to to do all of these things that they be uh you know that they're talking about mm -hmm. um then you know maybe there's something in a beginner's package that we can afford or the project can afford that would uh, allow us to to retain them and and get some cohesiveness um with all of that the dot part I want to be careful how I word this. Uh, what we have now is inadequate, as they pointed out. Um, other airports have better signage uh, on where they are, what they're located, and how to get there. I mean, they're absolutely correct that you have to be consistent mm -hmm. in what you're showing. We ours is not. Period is not. So we need to. Um, I would say sooner than later. Um, work with DOT and then correct that issue as far as signage from anywhere. Like you say, Steve, out here on the approach road on 37, on 68, um, we need to do that now. Mm -hmm. I know where to start. I've always hated, so I'll just go back to the sense I've always hated that stupid airplane that we use just because he didn't know no uh heads up about it it just there's the air fire plane going that way right so and hopefully they don't just do that okay. <laughs> right. yes. exactly uh, i know i wonder does that mean to like take a right hand turn because it's facing that way <laughs> i don't i'm i'm from new york state nick like i need it spelled out and lots of repetition <laughs> obviously the canadians get along just fine <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we have that covered? Yes. yes. Thank Good. you Thank for you. coordinating. Thank that. you for entertaining. So uh, we'll move on to item 1B3. Yes, the GSE building. Um, just quickly, what we're going to start off with is, uh, um, and I'm giving you this one's forward proposed to relocate the tent. And I just need Thank you. you to be aware of it. And, Thank uh, you. Um, there was two locations. One's pushing it out from where it is, uh, more toward um, the east. But the thing about it, if you think about the great room, you'll always see it. It'll be in your way, and it, it's going to be a more costly uh, to move it out there. So, just preliminarily, we've talked about shifting it over to almost where the employee parking lot is, and you fence it off. And we even talked about putting like maybe a three foot berm there. Um, it it makes it uh, cost wise, it's uh, less expensive because you're you're not moving it a great deal, and it's already paved right there. But this GSE is for all the equipment, the services, the aircraft. It's a maintenance building, and when we move it, we're probably going to have to get a new skin for that um, there. Um, I imagine because they put tan, that's what we'll go with. But if you've got some ideas of a color you'd like to see there, <laughs> blue and white with it. But you can see too that um, they pointed out you could put the OGS logo on the side of the building there to kind of uh, take people's so eyes. The plane's going in the right direction. <laughs> and it's kind of pointing towards <laughs> the front there. But um, I just wanted to get your uh, thoughts on that before we move forward i mean staff we've looked at it and we agree um it, we are out in the open and you, you do see a lot there um but i don't know as it takes that much away from uh, the look of the uh, airport the terminal so it has to be relo relocated mm -hmm. no matter what right because mm -hmm. right. it's right where you can see yep. right where the orange and gray yep. is in the, the addition no, what about, um, I'm thinking we've looked at uh, future plans, designs. By putting this there, does that conflict with anything we've talked about before going the other way out? Well, consider that it's a temporary structure. 
you might come up with, or, you know, when we talked about a, a hangar, an overnight transient hangar, yes. that's where we're headed. But you may go with another building that's a GSE building that's permanent metal. But for now, we really just can't afford to 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 go that direction. We, if you recall, part of this whole grant was um, we did put that, and they they uh, wouldn't fund it. Right. Do you remember right. the, yep. Yep. the aviation wouldn't, and FAA was kind of on that. We were going to do just what you're talking about, but um, that was cut out of that um, when we got the grant. Remember, it was. Yep. Um, so this is a temporary structure with the idea that um, you can eliminate that once you have a permanent structure, mm -hmm. but it would some, be something we'd live with for a number of years until you know time was where another uh, um, permanent building was built. So it doesn't interfere at all with any airline operations? No, and it's below the height of it. Um, doesn't interfere with the flight. Uh, okay. I'm going to try to say. When the plane comes yeah, in. Yeah, there's, so a, there's a flight plane out of there that nothing can uh, penetrate through, whether it's a tower or a light right. or a tree even. So Makes what do you think, me. David? It's not ideal. No, I was thinking you could put the, put the nice picture on the end of that building. I was no, thinking they, the same no, thing. No, they, they you put the skin on, you might as well put no, the logo. Wait. Change the color. <laughs> No, exactly. No, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, we have talked about that, and you know that's just showing what's there. But we did talk about mm -hmm. that. That yeah, you you tie back into that that local you sell advertising space, or you have you know, or something we could have. Whether it's a, like an art installation or something that speaks to the area, uh, as kind of a showpiece. Nice mural. Yeah, yes. yeah. Well, you can get that, but you just can't just buy it with something. Right, you get it right, embossed down under. Yeah, yeah. 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 Utilize the space at okay. the end of the day. How come that can't go all the way across the runway? What's that? This? There you go all the way because you'd be having a little tractor with a baggage cart. Right, you'd be crossing, crossing the, the runway. runway. If we, if you had a straight quarter mile uh, wow. road that had nothing to do with the t mm -hmm. uh, airport, right. you you could entertain that. Yes. Okay. Probably the best plan. So, we'll if I can make a recommendation that to the engineers that you don't really see any issues with that. I make that motion. I'll second. Okay. You're welcome. To your so we can discuss that. <laughs> Aye. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I'm just still thinking. Okay. <laughs> We're moving quick tonight, <laughs> Next, uh, four and five are combined, and Anthony will handle that. Yeah. So just so on the on the on the same premise of, of Julie and Charles's presentation of of trying to find these kind of value add sub projects to this overall um, terminal expansion and event center. Um, so we've the staff team has been having conversations with. Uh, some EV charger providers. Um, so we just wanted to make you aware of it. I think we've alluded to it during the full board meeting, uh, board meetings, um, but certain things like installation of chargers on site, potentially subsidized. So it's not a direct hit to our, uh, our bottom line. Um, and then some, some other options with EV chargers, integrating solar canopies. So then you'd have, um, electricity generation it would speak to the renewable um, energy side of, uh, of this project and also would add a um, uh, partially covered parking which could be a value add to our customers so things like that uh, you know the solar uh, the power generated they could do up to 110 percent of the of the load for the facility so making this entire complex um, a renewable uh, to where we really need it to be. Um, so just wanted to make you aware that's we've been having those conversations. We're exploring that. Um, so just and, and, excuse me, Bob. Um, and then when you think about EV charging, you think of the parking lot, but also along with the GSE building, 
we're going to ask to have maybe a couple of charging because there. there's going to be ground support stuff that's going to be electric. Mm -hmm. um, easel, maybe we don't have it now, but it, you make it more attractive to another firm that might come in um, that you already have that in place and you might as well do it and think ahead. So it, you know, when we talk EV chargers, we're also talking uh, things you might need for maintenance um, and for uh, aircraft uh, maintenance type of thing. Can the power authority help us out with that? Um, possibly, yes. And so National Grid, there's programs out there. Um, we just, we've talked to a number of people, but nothing in specifics. You know, some is you can negotiate or we can talk about, but. Um, Who receives the, uh, the revenue from the charging? It depends, I would imagine it depends on how it's installed. If they do the installation and all of that, then they probably would get a percentage of the revenue. Okay. Um, or so we, if we buy them outright, I, mm -hmm. there's probably different ways of. Uh, um, I have no idea what revenue comes out of that, but um, so it basically comes down to if National Grid is in on putting the chargers in, they receive revenue. Um, I, I think they just give a discount, and then there's one a firm that. Um, would install yeah. them. Yeah, so in the, the oh. National Grid subsidy instance, that is more of a grant. So they don't have any expectation of, of receiving anything in return other than okay. the electricity usage. Um, but just the firms we've connected with, that the play is that it would be a revenue generator for the airport. That's where I was going. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's well, so a value added pay service for, for the airport. Okay, any questions on that? The canopy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Solar canopy. Are you looking for a section of the parking lot that would have yes. solar panels on top of it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There would be size to um, take care of most of the demands of the terminal. Yeah. You would be you would park underneath the panels. Yeah. Yes. So right. you would have you would have partially covered parking. <laughs> They do that in other states. <laughs> oh, so you've seen it. He gets around. Instead of taking deals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that makes more sense. Yeah. Uh, so we wouldn't have fully, you know, it wouldn't be yeah. indoor parking, but it's it's very close. So that's uh, good. I like it. Yeah. yeah, I do too. Okay, you need to take off. Now. No, I'm good. You're good. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, the one thing they will do a sun reflective study because um, yes. the chairman asked me, yeah. you know, you're coming in, it's, it's okay on the one end, but if you have it up there, they've got to, I think they model it to make sure that you're not blind to anybody when they come in. So that was just an added thing. Well, if they have it at other airports, obviously they figured it out. Well, I haven't seen it necessarily at airports, but yeah, college campuses, yeah. Um, target parking lots, things like that. Yeah. And then our fallback on the canopy is that we have space to the northeast of the airport where we could engage somebody to put in. A, I, I, I hate using solar farm because it isn't that big, but something that of a size that would just take care of uh, the terminal to where, um, and we've, we've kind of priced them to where, you know, it's a lot of money for an individual, but for the project, um, it's surprisingly, um, for what you get for it, it's definitely worth the investment. Worth definitely yeah. looking at it. But if you could get the canopy, the EV charges all in one, it right. ties everything in, and it ties to what we said for our grant. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Any more discussion? All set there. Okay. I didn't see C and D. D is under C. So okay. um, we have reviewed our child care application today. Anthony and I uh, went over it with uh, Leanne West. With, um, and uh, a couple of things we learned, she she was updated from our, our we had a meeting with ESD um, to review our application and things that we could do to make it stronger. So we passed that on to her. She's aware of that. Um, two things, one of them is Considering what's happening with New York State budget, um, she advised us to wait um, at least a month to see what shakes out. It, um, there could be more, 
I don't know any of this for sure, but there, there could be um, another avenue for funding or more. Uh, it could change to where um, waiting would be worth it um, with that. So um, we're going to do that. And also she has discovered another uh, uh, funding source. Uh, I can't, I don't know right now. It's the Northern Border, yeah. um, Northern Border Association. project that has a, a, a certain element this year <laughs> that ties to child care that normally it's separate from what they normally do. So that's something we're going to look at um, with that. So she was, uh, she's pretty much on top of uh, where we are with that. We're, we're ready to go, but we're just going to hold just based on um, what's happening in Albany. So that makes sense. Um, any questions on that? Nope. Anybody else? We had that uh, committee meeting last week. Uh, yes. On child care and uh, with uh, Lynn, Lynn Piotrowski. Right. Uh, I thought it went very well. Her presentation was excellent. Questions uh, the committee asked regarding a little bit more detail than we've talked about before on what they could offer and everything. I think it went very well. And, um, you know, I think we're keep moving further ahead. That we moved as fast as I wanted, absolutely not. But I think we're getting there. The funding part seems to be the uh, uh, the issue slowing us down. Um, but it was a, a good question and, and an answer session with her here. So it was it was well um, worth it. Karen's working on getting um, the child care committee and staff together to do a tour of. What's the name of the uh, you, you the name of their bright, bright beginnings? Bright beginnings, uh, their their facility down there in Watertown. Yeah, and it's what roughly we're looking at the third week of April, kind of. But she's let all the board members know, and Tony isn't available, but I think you're on there, and Nicole, and but I think our group is. I think we're supposed to respond. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, I haven't yeah. yet either. <laughs> she can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll sign you up. Um, so yeah, that all good, all good. Um, that's all I have on that, Mr. Okay. Chairman. All right. We'll go on then to uh, IME Heavy Industrial Park. Um, yeah. That's E and F, and F is part of that. So okay. the solar farm general discussion. Um, we've been getting a number of proposals um, to lease the land out by across from the transfer station, mm -hmm. and it's been we've talked about things we want to different with that. It's roughly what 63 acres yeah. that 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 we have. Um, what we found is we've been getting a number of offers that want to uh, lease part of it and they want to they'll offer so much per acre per year um, um so i wanted to make you aware of that um we're we like the idea that they're interested but we're not too happy with we, we'd rather see it all being used or not at all because actually just to lease a half of that would kind of uh it wouldn't do much for us. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the, the current size is places it as a very niche property for industrial development. So mm -hmm. the further claw acreage away from that just really uh, diminishes its value at all for usability. Um, so we've been discussing potentially like counter proposals, alternative sites that we could potentially push, you know, um, solar panel arrays uh, in those more you're not in interested in a larger site? We don't know yet. We really haven't gotten any feedback yet. Isn't it that. basically the more panels you have, the more power it generates and the more revenue? Isn't that basically how it works? Yeah, but the permitting, it's easier if they stay down there that, I think, I'm you can tell me wrong, but under that 25-ish acres okay. thing is way oh, easier to permit. Yeah. So that's what so we're finding. Oh, we only want this little hunk of land. Yeah, I get those. But isn't that different for us than it would be for any other 
I don't know, municipality, individual. How, how do you mean it'd be different for us? Because we're an authority. As far as permitting. I don't know. I, they may have something to do with NYSERDA and permitting. There might be uh, things that are above us that not so much you're talking more like zoning and things like yeah, that. Yeah. I think we're okay there, but I, I think Dave's on to something that there might be a certain uh, at their end. So, so we know with the state's commitment to renewable energy yes. that we're going to see a lot more of these proposals right. moving forward. So we're trying to make. I'm just wondering, considering alternative as an authority, and the state is obviously wants to move in that direction. Does that make us our regulations a little bit different than others? I don't know. I'm just asking. Yeah, yeah. Well, well we have that substation right there. Yeah. We, that's one of the reasons. If, right. Right. Okay. This is big enough. That's, I, mean, I know they're going to, I know that's an issue other places. Yeah. And then you notice everyone's following the new uh, smart path. Yes. And there's plugins there, I believe, right. for things that, that makes that, um, that's designed that way. And that's why you see Canton right there. Right. Other Over places. that way. Yeah. yeah. So, well, anyway, just want to make you aware of it. We'll okay. give you more information as we, um, when we get feedback on that, but um, there's not a, a real rush for any kind of answer there. But uh, I just uh, just wanted to bring that one. Something up. to think about, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. How about other such matters or anything other than that? Um, just a need for a, an executive session with no, um, and it would be under uh, property. Uh, I can't. I don't have it in front of me, but. Real property negotiations. Proposed sale, acquisition, or transfer of real property. I didn't know that. <laughs> Thank you. It's it's a negotiated right. thing with that. So I just want to make sure that the press is aware of that. Appreciate it. Okay. So I I do have oh. one thing that okay. we can that we can talk about here, and I'm sure take care of it. <clears throat> it only came from one person. I would just kind of wonder. But it's been more than one, and it's been more than one occasion that um, people crossing the bridge over the weekend. There's been an issue with um, the toll booth having change. Being told they don't, that right. we're not going to change. They have an something. issue with receiving so many $20 bills, not having to change. Nobody said anything to us. Mm. It's not the first time I've heard it. And it's on the weekends. Hmm. When no one can get in. Oh, I see during the week they can run up here and change money constantly. But on the weekend, there's no way to get the ball. We would have to do something with the extra whatever. It's just yeah. Uh, minor thing but it could be an inconvenience yeah. to the workers out there and uh, the, the public if you're scrambling to make change um, and you just don't have it I think it's a good thing to have in a way no, right. having that have so many yeah, so many people down. crossing that you're running out of change so right. it's a good thing yeah. no we can take care of that it's just a Change in the way the changes. Exactly. Thank you. There. Oh, yeah. Time out. Okay. So I would entertain a motion for a joint executive session. I move. And there'll be no action on there'll the other. No action. Second. Second. Oh, yes. Second. Okay. Okay. Move and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Is there a motion? Is there a motion? No. Is there any more to uh no mr chairman first no mr chairman okay so i move we adjourn i'll second that motion okay all those in favor aye aye, aye. Well, uh, <laughs> okay, okay.